Uh, my name is Josh Scoggin. I'm in a band called, oh, I'm in a duo called 68. Um, and uh, this is Humble Beginnings. First concert I went to uh, was uh, Toadies and Hum and Bush. And Bush was headlining <clears throat> and uh, changed my life. Um, I, uh, I liked all three bands and a friend of mine was going and just kind of impulsively I said, oh yeah, I'm going too. And, uh, <clears throat> and then I, I literally had to like, as silly as it sounds now, I had to learn how you buy tickets for a show. Um, I couldn't drive or anything, so I had to like talk my parents into it the whole bit. But um, but I'd already told my friend I was already going. So I don't know. I I was young enough that I never thought about going to shows before then. And then when I went, it was over. I I literally just went buying tickets to. Uh, I mean, I saw Pumpkins on the Melancholy Infinite Sadness tour. I saw Foo Fighters and Color and Shape. I, I mean, any. Any concert that came through the area, I went just because of the the experience. Just changed my life, and and uh, and here I am today because of that, you know, that and other things. <laughs> we just did it as much as we could all the time. So uh, one time, <clears throat> I went and saw um, Helmet. Uh, they opened up for Corn. This kid like walked past us and was like. And he was like, yo, you guys going to be in the pit tonight? And I was like, yeah. And then uh, he was like, well, you may want to look out. And he pulled out a knife. And I was like, maybe I won't. <laughs> but yeah, he definitely just whipped out a knife. And he was like, well, you better watch. I, I don't know. I, th I guess he was trying to be a punk. Like, to, uh, like he's trying to be mean. Because uh, cause at first I thought he was trying to be our friend. Like, yo, you going to be in the pit. But I think he was trying to be like, yo, you better watch out. Because I'm going to be in the pit. And when there's knives involved, I just... I just assume stay on the stay on the edge there. So that's that's a good life, like <laughs> yeah, life, life motto. motto. Yeah, <laughs> there's <laughs> a knife involved. <clears throat> when I'm I, over here. Wouldn't knives get involved? I go that way. So I don't. That's a hard one. Well, it, I mean, it, ha, it had to be hum because I, I I know I bought a hum shirt and that was my first show, so I'm sure it was that. Um, we always tried to buy uh, the any opening band. <laughs> we always bought those shirts because, uh, especially back in those days, it was great to walk around school and people be like, "Oh, I've never heard of that." I like, mm. saw them, <laughs> saw them the other day. Obviously, everybody knew who Hum was, but as far as you know, like like um, we would always buy the, if we liked the headliner, obviously we'd buy that. But we'd also buy the um, try to buy the obscure like uh, opening band, <clears throat> and sometimes it was a stretch. Sometimes it was like. It was like, eh, they weren't that good, but at least I know I'll walk around school and people be like, I don't know who that is. And like, mm. <laughs> Back then it wasn't like, oh, I'll just Spotify them real quick and see. Yeah, it's like, it's not so <clears> easy <throat> just to look at your phone. Yeah. And, like... and so you could, you could just straight lie and be like, oh, they're awesome. Because <laughs> it's like, you're not going to find out they're not yeah. awesome until probably like a year from now when they come, when they, you know, tour through, mm -hmm. if you go, you know, so <laughs> there was so many shirts that I had back in the day that that were not awesome even at the moment I, oh, well they weren't terrible you know there was some thread of 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 uh of hope but uh but you definitely upsold yeah yeah i definitely was like oh this man's pretty sweet <laughs> my brother i have an older brother who's six years older than me and uh me and him were very opposite in a lot of ways just being a younger brother anything he was into i was like mm, lame you know and anything he thought was cool or anything he thought was dumb i was like oh i love it you know he he had a Nirvana's Bleach um, cassette tape, and I remember he was like super into hip hop and stuff at the time. So he was just like, pfft. I just remember him being like so anti this like record, this cassette tape, and he like literally threw it in the trash. And I I pulled it out, and I was like, I like it. I had no idea. I had no idea. Obviously, they weren't, you know, what all happened. But I was like, oh, I love this. So I put it in, and I was and I just like. I was like, I'm going to love this for sure. Like, whatever it is, I'm going to love it. Nirvana's Bleach album, I definitely had the cassette tape of it. And I, and I definitely was, like, <clears throat> kind of forced myself to be a fan of it. And then, of course, like, you know, everything that happened made, it made it a pretty great thing that was happening. And I, and I have uh, my brother to thank for it. Well, the first band I ever started was a band uh, called Norma Jean. 
and uh, we we had a different uh, moniker back then, but uh, it that's uh, started that. Um, in real life, I started it about when I was maybe a sophomore in high school, but it was just we would just play shows at my house. Like we we would have parties at my house just so we could play songs for them for people, and uh, <clears throat> and um, but the anyone who may know uh, the band Norma Jean w would probably know more around when I was like a senior or so, because that's when we started m making it out of the, like the southeast and. <clears throat> um, our drummer's dad lived in Texas, so we were playing shows in Texas uh, real early on. But other than Texas, I mean, we basically just played shows in the Southeast, and then, um, and then of course, you know, kind of went from there. And uh, when when I was a senior uh, in high school, we we uh, I think it was right after we graduated, we we did our first like three month full U.S. Uh, tour, and I've been touring ever since. So. <laughs> The first show we ever played was um, with a band called Training for Utopia, who we all loved, and we and <clears throat> if, I feel like it might have been a little easier to get on shows back then because um, we we just called uh, our drummer called and was like, "Hey, we want to open up this show," and they said, "Yeah," and we was like, "What?" <laughs> like we totally just did it, not thinking it would be real. But it was this band called Warlord, and then Training for Utopia, and. Uh, um, and uh yeah the that the train of Freetopia is one of our like all time favorite bands at that point in life and like um we've we've grown on we've grown to actually become friends with uh several of the guys that used to be in that band and stuff and um and uh that was our very first show and then um so when it was that easy, we actually called we saw where they were going next in Birmingham, Alabama, and we called that venue <clears throat> and uh, just did the same thing. It was like, hey, we'd love to open up for this show, and the guy was like, okay, <laughs> and uh, and so we got to play that show as well. So that was our second show, same same little tour, and uh, that guy ended up becoming a really huge part of my life. Actually, he uh, he went on to work at a record label and and became our A and R guy for a long time, and uh, we became really good friends. But it's really funny that we just met because we were we just snuck onto a show like that. <laughs> I almost stabbed a woman one time because we, I'll t okay, <clears throat> it's more complicated than this, but the, the short version is we, this lady came over and it was like, I need a ride to my apartment. And we were like, mm, okay, uh, we'll, we'll do that, you know? And then all of a sudden she was like, oh, you will? And then she was like, hey, they said they'll do it. And like these two dudes came over and we were like, oh boy, like this is it, we're, we're done. And I was... 16 or 17 um and we, i don't know and we were all like pretty young so we were like oh this is it <clears throat> and uh and so anyway we 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 drive up we we go into the i mean we we drive and we we could get, go through this like really sketchy area and we're just like this is it this is it and um one of the fast food restaurants was had this uh had this thing where you could buy a food and get like a nascar glass like a like a mug or something and i got one for my dad because he was in the uh, nascar <clears throat> but it was broke it, we, it, we had it in the van and like everything in the van it just broke and so um i was really sketched out and so i, I actually had the bottom of the glass in my hand like the bottom of the glass with the with the shards coming out this way and uh it, it there's a lot more to tell to the story but the 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 point um <clears throat> they when they were exiting I was like alright if it's gonna happen this is where it's gonna happen if they're gonna like I don't know take us out this is where it's gonna happen so the two guys get out and then she gets out and they have to go right past me to get out the door of the van and as they exit um, I was like whew okay and then all of a sudden she like charges at the van she's like running she's like screaming she's like ah. and I, I, I like picked I picked up the glass with every intention of just like I don't know what, but make keeping safe. And then I just heard her say, "My purse." And I just happened to look and she had left her purse and she wanted to get her purse before we took off. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but my my adrenaline and stuff was full throttle. Like this is it. This is the day that I stab a person and uh, uh, with a NASCAR glass, which is uh, as a southerner that felt all right.